Welcome back. This is the second segment. Feeling inspired. Today I'm inspired by gentlemen. I had the pleasure to having several conversations this week with Jeremiah and You know, I like the fact that I find it easier to talk to young, open minds about God and the real world or worldview conversations than people of my own age you know we are living in an age where an age dominated by work and entertainment and the one thing I tell the young man because the young man is like he's frustrated also by you know how few people are really open minded to concepts that make perfect sense but out, out of the ordinary the mainstream and I say you know it's okay it's okay it's not for everybody see knowledge is to be applied for you and your life and the fruits of your labors the fruits of your faith is really only going to benefit you unless people see that you are producing some type of fruit that they want a bite of as well now It is true that most people want the fruit without ever having to plant the seed and go through the process of grooming that fruit tree into a vessel that can produce that fruit. They only want the riches after the process has been endured by you. So this is the reason what this is the reason why there's a disconnect between the wellness and the wealthy and the poor. But things are what they are So things must be what they are This information is for you And your benefit For your lineage You know I have a poem That goes something like this right? It's an affirmation That I will not be robbed Of the gift of life To be led by nonsense As blind faith Least we all fall or fade An eternal void of emptiness my God is real. <laughs> so tis is for those who persuade with illusions like pits of flames for those without flesh or nerve or Milky Way rivers for those <laughs> beyond the clouds. See, a lot of what we read in the Bible are metaphors, are stories to give us real world knowledge, information about our present Abilities and the lessons from the ancestors. But knowledge is not for everybody. This is the reason why Christ said, For those with ear, let them hear. But for those who thirst, let them drink of the waters. You can lead a mule to the water And you can tell that He needs water It needs water But if it refuses To drink To the point it's so stubborn That it drops 
to its end because of its rebellious nature. You can lead them to the water, but you cannot make them drink. But what we have to recognize is the gift that God has given us, which is life, time, energy, health, and an abundance. We do live in a world of abundance and this we must be grateful for not only God, but also the Lord, the masters of our civilizations and societies and institutions. There's good and evil about it. Yes. (laughs) It's okay to recognize both sides. Yes. The Lord was keeping Adam from the fruits of knowledge. He admit, he had confessed this, Genesis 3.22. Indeed, behold, the man has become like one of us. He's saying the serpent was correct. That knowledge makes a man like gods to know good and evil. He said the man has become like one of us to know the good and the evil. At least he reach out and take also of the tree of life and live forever. This least means that he was, he had the intention of preventing Adam from taking of the fruits of life. This is the reason why in the end, in the Elfie and Omega, the beginning in the first and the last, the connection is the river. It says, and he showed me a river, a pure river of water, of light, clear as crystal proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb in the middle of its streets on either side of the river was the tree of life if you actually do this you actually go travel the Nile River which you can for less than two grand you can go travel the Nile cruise the Nile river And you will see on both sides of the river the tree of life, which is papyrus. Upon papyrus, the first world paper, which was like the internet, not only money was made and contracts was made, but the scriptures were written on this device. Passed and spread, and from that, religions were born. And its leaves were for the healing of the nations. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him. God is the spirit. The lamb is the offspring of the sheep. (laughs) A domesticated creature. First domesticated from the Mufflin about 10 to 11,000 years ago. (laughs) In Abram's land called Mesopotamia. In what we call today the South Euphrates. So as I was saying, Assyria and Babylonia were connected by the Euphrates. Babylonia is the first to be conquered by the Assyrians. And the Assyrians morphed and they too became one. And then they migrated into the lands of Canaan into Egypt. And this is the trinity of Ham, Shem, and Japheth, the three sons of Noah, who was the son of Lamech, who had two wives in Genesis 4, Adah and Zillah, who was the great, great, great grandchildren of Cain. 
who've moved to a city called Nod and found a wife and bore a son named Enoch and named the city after his son Enoch. Therefore, it's two Enochs. And just like a son can be begotten or adopted and born, founded from scratch, like the Nubians founded the kingdom of Cush and Kemet and Kerma and Punt. And then the offspring of Cush went into the land of Assyria and built Babel. Erech. Alcade, Kalna, in the land of Shinar. Then from that land he went to Assyria and built Naiva, row of birth ear, Kala, and risen between Naiva and Kala. That is the principal city. So the Nubians built in their homeland. And then they were scattered abroad and they built in Assyria. <laughs> the Lord in the, God, in the garden, in the Bible, the Lord who came down and seen the city with the tower came down into Egypt. <laughs> Babel is in Egypt. In Genesis 10, the chapter I just read where it tells you the genealogy of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. First, it talks about Japheth who was the sons of Gomar, Magog, Medea, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, and Tyrus. The sons of Gomar were Ashkenaz, the Ashkenazi, the Ashkenaz are a genetic people. And from the these, the coastland people of the Gentiles were separated into their lands. This, these people were the Gentiles along the coastlands of the Mediterranean Sea. Japheth. Then it talks about the sons of Ham who were Cush. Mizraim is the Aramaic and Hebraic word that was used for the land of Kemet instead of Egypt, which isn't used until after Babel was given to the land of Kemet. And then in chapter, and that was in chapter 11, and then in chapter 12, when Abram comes into the land of Canaan down into the land of Egypt, the word Egypt is used for the first time biblically. Before Genesis 12, the storyline was had more to do with Cush, because Cush is the founding. He is the firstborn, the first mentioned. Then Mizraim, which is Kemet, but it is a foreign word for the black lands, which was described by the locals as KMT. Then you have Punt, which is also an offspring of Cush in the southern hemisphere, just like Canaan is an offspring of Kemet in the northern hemisphere. And this is talking from the point of view of our modern European mind frame. But in their mind frame, remember that when they say upper that meant the south and lower was more than was more what we call north all right because the foundation descended up along the nile the way the nile river flows which is northern towards assyria so it goes towards assyria and this is the reason why